hear from you. Um, you guys should have a the latest copy of the bill, um, hopefully. Uh, if you'll take that out um, in our last 15 minutes here, I want to talk about some of the changes. Um, uh, thank you. Um, I also wanted to point out, you know, I know we heard from uh, uh, some of the folks in, in DPI previous on some of the turnaround efforts. Um, I know actually D Dr. Henry has done some study of those turnaround efforts um, when you get those materials available. There's also H Helen Ladd at Duke because also some of you have seen some recent uh, uh, some recent news articles about the study she did. We're also going to put that online for you to check out her results in examining um, some of those turnaround efforts um, and let me say just to just to go back to um, some of my thinking in this process before I run through a couple of these um, a couple of the substantial changes to the to the bill um, and, and they're passing around a, a chart that I think will help with some of my thoughts there are a couple of things that Dr. Glazier and Dr. Henry said that I have stuck in, in my mind. Um, one, Dr. Glazier just commented on sort of re-highlighting what um, Marcus said about the existing state of some of these schools being a great problem for us, but also commenting that this is not um, a panacea. As I think I've said, it's not a silver bullet to miraculously make. Um, you know, I don't, I don't view it that way. I don't view it as a silver bullet to miraculously solve all these problems. And um, a friend of mine uh, helped with this chart, and I think it, it gave a good description for me of when we're looking at our turnaround efforts, some of what we might be thinking about um, in, in the breadth and depth of, of, of the challenge for us. And um, it's got... Uh, it's got a, arrows going up showing the intensity of the intervention and then arrows uh, along the bottom sort of talk about the number of schools. And I think, you know, what you've seen, there's a, the bottom layer is district-led turnaround, some of what we've been seeing. You've got a very large, wide breadth for that, large number of schools. Um, uh, when, when, when the schools, the, the, the local LEAs are focusing themselves on those schools, the DPI model, the district and school turnaround that we've seen in play in certain counties, certain areas. Um, I-Zones, um, which we've heard a lot of conversation about, and, and the most substantial change to the bill in front of you now is that there is a new I-Zone layer in it that was not there previously, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the ASD is sort of the most intensive and actually the smallest in the triangle model. And the, I, I just wanted to give you a sense of um, when I was having conversations with folks, some of what I was thinking about, about the interventions and the partnerships, and I think when you look at this, I, I hope this looks like a, a collaborative chart in a sense, and not, um, uh, not one that's, um, again, to everyone's point, even when districts try to go in and take over a school, there is hostility and difficulty. So we're never gonna escape the reality of, of, of working in turnarounds is never easy, but um, I wanted to give you that um, concept. Um, Inside the actual bill, um, I want to let you guys um, uh, ask any questions, but I do want to point out the most, uh, there's a couple of changes and um, the most substantive is on page eight of the bill, um, which is an addition of an I-Zone concept, and this would be um, applicable only if there is a transfer by the local board to the ASD that school district that LEA would also have the right um, to do up to three schools in an I zone we can have some conversation about that you can you know read through some of the um, I think we tried as much as possible to follow some of the way the Tennessee I zone language read, um, and you've heard, you know, some some input on how I zones have done, which I think was uh, positive. I've had some conversations with um, some superintendents 
along this line as well. Um, and we had um, one other change in the um, operator section, and Kara may remind me if I, uh, uh, there's two, two other changes. In the, uh, on the first page in section three on the achievement school operator, <clears throat> we just clarified that DPI would not be one of the selected operators. Obviously, DPI is doing turnaround efforts already in numerous schools. Um, but just to clarify, the goal was not to, to, to um, the goal of this pilot is to do, you know, more different things than just what is occurring with DPI. And then in uh, section on page two, um, we originally had that no more than one school could come from an LEA, and we just put the qualifying clause that unless the local board of education consented. So if, if a district actually said, no, we, you know, maybe they want to do an IZEN and maybe they want to submit more than one school, they, they, could, they could do that. It just, they would not ever be required to put more than one school in. Um, so I think those are the changes. Um, love to have any sort of committee conversation, questions um, based on anything you've heard today. Anymore. First, I'd like to understand the process. Uh, you mentioned earlier that other committees were going to be looking at this. So, my first question on that process part is, is your intent to ask this committee to approve or not approve this bill today? Not today. We'll have one final meeting. And so, what I would expect, I remember the date, uh, April 13th. Our final meeting will be April 13th, and so what I'll give you guys some time to read over this bill, give me feedback, ask staff, and in fact, I know there's been some questions um, outlined about some liabilities and different things. Um, I've had a lot of conversation with staff about those. If somebody would like to set up, a, a, if you'd like to have some time with staff, I think we could arrange that to ask you know, some particular questions about those issues. We walk through them, we can ask some of them right now, obviously, but, um, I know as you read through it, I know we haven't had a ton of prep time for you to read through the bill, so I, I don't want to um, force those questions when you're not ready for them. Um, but um, we would, you know, I would like for any feedback mm -hmm. to be given maybe a week before the committee meeting, so maybe by April 6th, if you will provide any feedback that you'd like to see in, inserted and put into the bill. Um, if you'll follow up with us and I will do my best to, to either follow up with you or work in you know whatever and then on the 13th we would have a vote to move forward with the bill which would then be sent in the short session to I assume the House Ed Committee uh, uh, let me uh, go represent Rydell and then I think I've got Representative Richardson Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all the folks that did such a good job of presenting the information to us today and for the public comment as well. Uh, on page 8 of the bill that we have before, I wanted to ask a question about the innovation zone. To make sure I understand correctly here. Uh, the first line, the local board of education transfers a qualifying school to an ASD. Uh, the local board of education may ask the state board to be allowed to create an I zone for up to three continuing performing schools. So, the creation of an I zone is going to be dependent upon moving one school at least to an ASD, correct? That's correct. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, uh, Representative Richardson and then uh, Representative Beale. Um, thank you for the opportunity to sit in and, and to listen to this um, very informative discussion. Um, and some of the, the thing that I heard from all the presenters basically is that we need to have community engagement. And I'm looking at page two where you look at your selection committee. Would it be, uh, wouldn't it, to start community engagement, would it not be uh, positive to start it at this level and have a parent on here and maybe a community member uh, in section B, uh, what is it, um, B there at the top of the page when you talk about three members of the State Board of Education, one teacher, one principal, one superintendent. Would it not help us to mirror 
that we are encouraging community engagement by adding a parent and a business person, a community liaison. I think that's a very interesting question. I'm glad to look at that. I mean, I will say, you know, we don't know exactly what community they come from yet, but there are community organizations that work across the state. That might be a very appropriate addition, and I'd be glad to look at that and talk further. I appreciate that comment. Uh, Representative Gill. Thank you for um, allowing me to sit in on this, and this is a uh, very interesting. Um, the school board association, I think it was, made a comment about having a, a seven a page of questions. Is it possible for us to get a copy of that? Yes, I'm sure uh, Bruce would be glad to get you. He, I think okay. he sent it to all the committee members, but uh, I'm sure. Um, He's right, right behind you there, and Bruce, okay. if you could follow up with Representative Hill, that'd be great. And um, who else is having input in this bill other than you? I mean, I know the committee is meeting and you're giving it to the committee, but I'm just saying uh, the design of the bill. Well, the design of the bill, I think is that, and I may have to ask staff, to remind me if we that both Georgia and Tennessee have legislation and I'm not sure where what I started with what we started with Georgia, Georgia I think um, Georgia I think was maybe the starting language that I used in working with staff to, to, to start the bill um, I mean in terms of conversations I've had you know conversations with the school board association the school administrators association um, I've had some charter conversations with some charter folks. I've had um, conversations with some superintendents. Um, so it's been, I mean, lot, lots of member, lots of, you know, different folks that have had interest or have had some experience. Some friends run charters in Louisiana that I've talked to um, and, you know, sent questions to. Other questions? Come on, Representative Warren. I'm sure you're not, I'm sure you're not finished yet. Well, as uh, I would like to think that it takes a certain amount of knowledge to ask a good question, and I have not had the opportunity to go over the bill in any detail whatsoever. Just I have listened in as I, as time permitted and, and trying to pay his attention today. So I'm glad to know you're not going to take a vote on this because I couldn't can't couldn't vote for it today. The, um, the process going forward, uh, as much as I appreciate the even-handedness you've, you've applied, um, I am curious about how our friends in the other house are going to look at this and what that process will be. So I've got a handle on what we're going to be up with, what we're going to be dealing with it during the short session. If this, in fact, can even be handled during the short session, and I'm not at all sure that it can. The, uh, the fact that you've expanded this to, to include Innovation Zone, I am curious about how that Innovation Zone issue works in this context that the, uh, the local board has to transfer out of school to an ASD, and then we kind of back it, back it up after that. I'm not I frankly don't understand yet how that can work. And then the other part is it's crystal clear from the testimony today in particular about how critical community involvement is in the entire process. So again, I haven't read the bill in its entirety to know what you've, what is being proposed with regard to informal process for community involvement, but um, I can't help but be, but be impressed with the fact that that uh, Tennessee has has obviously spent over a half a billion dollars, and I'm wondering where we're going to find that kind of money. So, I, as an appropriations guy, I, that's still that's on my mind as well. So, those are the things that are that are on my mind. Good news is there were zero state, state appropriations for that. That's right. That's right. So where. Do we have reason to believe that we can find that kind of of money available in North Carolina at this point, or, or 
I'm just trying to get my head around the appropriation side and what can be expected, the accountability side, and then most particularly the community involvement piece. So those are the things that are very much on my mind at this point. Uh, one last point with regard to the presentation by former Representative uh, Marcus Brandon. Uh, I visited, as, as they know, I visited the uh, RTP Charter School and uh, blown away by what I saw in, um, in how they mentioned, how they've addressed the needs of a, of a pretty wide variety of kids, not, it's certainly not a small group preset. And that, I couldn't help but be really impressed with that. And I have, may have some more information that I could share with you and the, and the other members of the committee that they were, they were kind enough to share with me. So I will do that. Thank you. I want to follow up just to try to comment on some of your concerns to try to give a little more backdrop on what I expect from this process um, I think you heard some good things from our speakers about the fact that just and I said just putting this bill out there we've seen reaction in uh, local LEAs around the state um, because there is a sense in which if if there is not a sense of the state saying hey we know we're responsible ultimately to make sure these kids are getting um, you know a sound basic education then you know so, something has to happen and um, I think that's a positive. I mean, I said, yeah. uh, you know, for, for step, step one is creating um, reactions that where, where folks realize we have got to do something different than we, we, we've been doing. And I thought that, um, you know, Dr. Henry's question, of, he's not sure any of this would have happened, but for an ASD being put in place to create this kind of reaction is, is something for us to consider. Some of the... I think on the community collaborative side, that's a very important piece. And one of the things I've done in the bill, in year one, no school has to even be put in to the ASD. I want the ability to hire a superintendent to put them out in the field, working with LEAs. A part of some of these other options are put in place to see if they can create a match with an LEA that is a more ideal situation. If, if the LEA says we're willing to put one in because we want to do an I zone or we want to do a principal turnaround and we'll do one, whatever it is that might be a trigger for them to partner and be collaborative, that that's that would always be my first goal. I mean, if you can create a collaborative environment where the the, the LEA and the ASD superintendent are willing to say, hey, let's you want to do that? I want to do this. Let's. You know you've got some schools that are subject to this criteria. Let's see what we can do. But I put that year process in there too, so that that superintendent, when they go around, they may have feedback for us again. And this provides them the opportunity to come back and say, you House committee members who are very familiar with this bill, you know, there's three changes I think you need to this bill for me to make it work the way I want it to. And so I think putting that superintendent in place who is going to focus and spend that year looking at these schools, work with these superintendents, they may come back with some more critiques and we'll have the ability to make those changes before they take a school in. But if we don't put the superintendent in place, then you know, then we're, we're sort of still, still stuck on go. And so that's why I put this lag time in, which in some sense for all of us, you know, the idea that we might be still two years out from even putting a school in is really two more years of kids in those schools that may not be getting what they need but I also understand if we don't have collaboration we have other problems so just for some of you know my background and thought about why it's structured the way it is and I will appreciate you know t take time the next you know week or two here and and give us you know <clears throat> more questions and, and feedback and I'll do my best to to work those things in and um, and hopefully uh, at least uh, you know, move forward with trying to get the best results for these kids that we possibly can. Uh, Representative Richardson. Uh, with your description just there, uh, would this superintendent also be required to try to find funders in that year? I think that's a good question. I mean, the way it's set up right now, um, 
because of the structure of just five schools that in, in Tennessee they actually have ASD run schools so they have to have money to fund it you would not technically need outside money now I think when you're going to look at some of those high-performing charters you, you may want there may be some purposes for, for raising funds but in, in Tennessee they had to have it because they literally were the ASD itself was running separate schools we don't actually have that and we're much smaller I mean they had uh, you know 30 schools run by the ASD and I mean you know they had a much larger pilot or if you want to call it a pilot a much larger starting point than we do and so we're much smaller and so some of those numbers are not as problematic and we don't have our own separate district the way this is set up right now either but they would have the opportunity certainly to go pursue and, and, and I would expect them to be talking to Malika and other folks in New Orleans about their process and to be giving again giving us that feedback and Well, I think we're only seven minutes over your lunch hour. Um, thank you all, and uh, we're adjourned.